So let's start in on cosmology. This is the study of the large-scale structure of the universe. And we know an enormous amount now about this subject. In the 20s we knew little. There was little observational data that could tell us how the universe worked. In fact, as mentioned earlier, uh, most cosmologists believe that that, um, that the universe was just our island galaxy. And then Hubble, Edwin Hubble, made his important discoveries, observations in the 30s, and found that uh, there are other galaxies, islands or stars out there, and that they're all uh, receding from one another. So, this is, these are the contents of the uh, so-called standard model cosmology. We've discussed this. We believe that general relativity exists. And also it's assumed that the universe on the large scale is homogeneous and isotropic. So it's homogeneous. It means that the matter density is uh, uniform everywhere. And, and the um, universe is isotropic, so it doesn't matter in which direction you look. It looks the same. This is a fundamental principle called the cosmological principle. The Copernican principle of cosmology. We're not in any special place in the universe, in space or time. Now I'll get back to this very important principle later. Uh, there's a uniform cosmic microwave background radiation uh, with a temperature of about 2.7 degrees Kelvin. And this is supposed to be the, uh, the, the, the uh, result, the glow of the Big Bang at the beginning of the universe. Now this is a picture of the evolution of the universe in the standard model of cosmology. We start with, in the standard model with what's called inflation. The universe expands exponentially fast at the beginning at t equal to zero, at the so-called Big Bang, or just after the Big Bang. And uh, about 400,000 years after the Big Bang, you get the cosmic microwave background. This is the last scattering of electrons and photons. After this, the photons decouple from matter, and they stream through, and we can see everything uh, through telescopes up to this surface of light scattering, which is like a big curtain. At present, we can't see through this curtain. And what's, in what's at the beginning of the universe is, is effectively invisible as far as light is concerned. So, about 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang, we have the present day with galaxies. And these are the first stars 200 million years after the Big Bang. So the dark matter and dark energy are the most puzzling parts of the standard cosmology. It's, it's the prob probably the biggest mystery in, 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 in physics today. And there are, if you, there are, there's something called the Electronic Archive, archive.org, A-R-X-I-V.org. You can go there yourselves. And you can read my papers, by the way. Look for Moffat. And <coughs> uh, I counted the number of papers that came out on the archive yesterday for astrophysics and cosmology. 50 papers. 50 papers roughly a day times about 360 to get to, to something. There's something like 30,000, 40,000 papers published in physics per year. This is amazing. Okay amount of uh, knowledge that's coming out through computers. Okay, so the dark matter is cold and collisionless. The dark matter, since it's invisible, doesn't interact with any matter. It only interacts with gravity. So we can only infer its existence through gravity. Except we don't like that. So we try to find that interacts with matter weakly a little bit so we can detect it. We'll get around to that. 
the dark energy is a, is a smooth, uniform distribution of something which we don't detect and we don't understand. It's something I don't understand. And uh, it, it uh, dominates over the matter today, the little cold dark matter, so that the universe is accelerating. The expansion of the universe is, is, is claimed to accelerate uh, after the discoveries of uh, two groups, the California group and the Australian group, who observed supernova explosions. Uh, this is in 1998. And this is, has caused a lot of trouble with physics and cosmology. We don't like it. Who ordered it? Okay. <laughs> I didn't. So this is uh, a picture chronologically of uh, the universe's evolution. This is the so-called Big Bang Singularity. <coughs> However, I have another theory called variable speed of light cosmology, which is not <coughs> inflation. I, I tend to be a contrarian because I'm a curious person. And so if someone produces a theory and it becomes a so-called standard theory, I think there has to be another way of explaining this. So I produce another theory. Not just to be difficult, but because I'm curious about whether such a theory is, is uniquely the only way to describe the universe. <coughs> okay. Uh, so the, the uh, Einstein's theory is based on what's called the equivalence principle. And this means that, that uh, when you drop a lead ball or a feather in a vacuum, there is no air friction. They both fall at the same rate in the gravitational field, or in the force of the gravitational geometry of space-time. And uh, this is a basic to Einstein's gravity theory, and I use this to modify this theory. Now, these are different ways of uh, possibly modifying it. We either change the geometry of space-time, or we add new fields. I've tried both. By the way, I spent many years modifying Einstein's gravity theory. And it was, in fact, it was my PhD thesis, or part of it, at Trinity College, Cambridge, a, a long time ago. <laughs> but in those days, there was no observational reason for doing what I did. I just did it out of curiosity. Okay. It was not a popular subject. So, uh, I, but I've gone, got, got down to uh, what I call my STVG, which stands for Scalar Tensor Vector Gravity. Scalar Tensor Vector have to do with the fields, the kinds of fields that I add to Einstein's geometrical picture of gravity in order to fit all the data without dark matter. And uh, it leads to self-consistent theory. So you have to construct a self-consistent, a mathematical self-consistent theory that competes with Einstein. Uh, when I was doing modified gravity, I was you know, pro probably the only one person at Cambridge doing it. And uh, Fred Hoyle, my first supervisor, was not happy with it. But he put up with it. And um, I published papers on this. However, over the years, uh, I've come to this simplest uh, uh, modified gravity theory called STVG, and it's published in journals, peer-reviewed journals. So, uh, in addition to the uh, space-time geometry of Einstein's gravity theory, I have a vector field called the Fion field, which is effectively a fifth force, so there are five forces in nature. In addition to, uh, we have uh, gravity, electromagnetism, the weak radiative decay force, and the strong force that holds the nucleus together, and this final force. <coughs> However, it turns out that the fifth force charge, like electric charge, is proportional to mass. So there's the, once you have, a, give me the mass of a body, I can determine everything. I don't have to have an unknown fifth force charge. Uh, also, the gravitational coupling, Newton's so-called Newton's gravitational coupling,